TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Today on How TV. What is the best meal or what's your favorite meal for, for iftar? What meal do you like to break your fast to it every day? If you're giving that meal every Ramadan, you keep taking it to break your fast. Ebiriko. Ebiriko, no, no. Yes. Every day of Ramadan. Yes, Ebiriko, Ebiriko. Uh, probably custard at first, then after bread and beans. Wait, custard at first, then after bread and beans. Okay, then after uncle? Nothing else. Nothing, Abi. I thought you say rice. <laughs> what is a biripo? Uh, it's made of cocoa yam. Cocoa yam and light uh, fry steel or so. I love that particular food. And it's not too heavy. It's cocoa yam. At the end of the day, before my grip, if you take it before my grip, before you sleep, you are, you are done. So you just do a little bit of exercise, maybe by going for Tarawi, then you come back. That's all. So can I assume that for me, Jebu? I am a typical. Ah, bad job. Thank you very much. What is your favorite meal for Iftar? You can eat that meal for the rest of Ramadan. I like food. Though. You like food? I don't really have a favorite meal, but um, I like um, rice with um, pepper sauce, the really spicy one with very diced, fried, very ripe plantain, uh, and maybe a glass of yogurt. Can I say any food, any food? I think if they give you for 30 days, you will keep eating it and you keep enjoying it for your store. Um. I could eat chips and plantain with a wide variety of sauces and whatever for the rest of Ramadan. Let's hear what the sauces will give us the full details. Okay, I could eat it with ketchup, with eggs, I could take it liver sauce, gizzard sauce, or whatever. I could, I could just eat it like that. I love chips and plantain. Only one plate? No, like I mean, like I could just alternate the sauce if I have to eat the same thing every day. Yes. I'll uh, say bread and pasta. Bread and pasta? <laughs> yes, bread and pasta. In the same plate? No. You think bread or spaghetti? For one iftar or for all the iftars in Ramadan? <laughs> Just a plate of that for, for one iftar. I'm sure you wake up for it. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. It depends. You know, you can make the pasta into a sauce, something like that, and then you put it in the bread. <laughs> okay, but pasta. Thank you very much. I'm sure I would like to see how it would look like when they are all ready. What's your favorite meal for iftar? Meal for iftar. Your favorite meal for iftar. Oh, I think they recommended me for iftar. <laughs> they favorite me. I don't have favorite. And I also tell people that I actually don't prepare for Ramadan. People will be asking me how you prepare for Ramadan. Muhammad, Ramadan just happened for me because I don't have to go buy fruits that are that is not take on Ramadan. I don't have to go out over it because I'm having iftar. I just have a drink of water or whatever is available. I don't have a favorite. Just like I don't have a favorite food on another day. I don't have a favorite food in Ramadan. I just because it is recommended that rather eating hard food for iftar, it's better to take fruit. So I take fruit that comes available oranges, mango, apple as it comes. It doesn't have to be exotic, just food. 
What is your favorite meal for iftar? For iftar? <laughs> I'll prefer rice, just rice. Just rice? You? I prefer pap and plantain. Pap and plantain? Pap, beans and plantain. Okay, pap, beans and plantain. <laughs> Bread and tea. After how many hours of fasting? Yes. It will be okay. For me, yes. Um, I'm not sure. I think bread. Because we do light food in the evening and heavy food in the morning. So I think bread is probably, yeah. Um, why bread? Uh, it's light. So it's easy. You just have to fry egg and that's it. Just to fry egg, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think I like it um, very light, okay, because I don't want to be too heavy. Um, um, I just say noodles. Noodles, okay. You? Realistically, I don't have a favorite meal or anything, but like um, one very important thing that I like to stick with is to eat very light at night. You understand? It's Ramadan, you should have a iftar light for me so that you can have enough capacity to move around in the middle of the night to do some tajud and the like. So anything light, light. Uh, well, moi moi will do for me, right? And uh, some very little logi, maybe a cup of it. Okay, um, so, so you, we can say you are the Ajakpako is Iboti because he says noodles, you say moi moi, I mean. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> Momo and Gary. Momo and Gary. <coughs> Gary with cold water. With cold water and milk and sugar. No granite. No, if I'm using my money, no granite. That would be too much of so much of things. Thank you very much. Ugiana Kara. With or without milk? Without milk, I'm allergic to milk. <laughs> uh, my most favorite meal for you, Star. <laughs> I think I should be okay with probably beans and plantain. Beans and plantain? Yes. Nothing again? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing again? Nothing. Okay. Thank you very much for coming on our TV. Summer comes to Um, What is your most favorite meal for Iftar? My favorite meal? Um, I like yam balls. Eh? <laughs> yam balls. Pepper soup, yam balls. It's like a house oh. meal, yeah. That's all. Um, zopo and fruit salad. It just depends on what, how I'm feeling that day. Chips, pepper soup, <laughs> chips, um, chicken, and drinks. Drinks or drink? Drinks. So if you are feeling very good, what will you put together? What's the combination like? Combination. Usually, in a house, like family, the thing that will be there is um, ose, which is bean cake with um, chi um, french fries, which is yam, stuff like that. Everything on one plate? Yeah. That first week, everything will be there. So you said zobu. Yeah, Zobo. You like Zobo? Why do you like Zobo? I just, I love it. Which kind of drinks? Zobo. Zobo. Yeah, I love you, Zobo. <laughs> Our wow, house. <I'll> take. <coughs> I will take that home. What color of Zobo? Red. The red one. Okay, how many colors do we have? I think one. Okay, so you're going to take everything in one plate. Everything together with Zobo. That's a son. That's a wonderful lift on. Thank you very much for coming, Khadija. <laughs> yeah, I love you, Zobo. Well, thank you very much for coming on our TV. Hal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Anything, anything, but first is water.
That's like the easiest thing to pick after fasting. I would say rice and pap. So that it will enable me to be able to pray my taraway. Because when I'm heavy, I may not be able to. I'll be lazy about that. Nothing for say but ogi. I'm way way. That's all. A pop, I'm way way. Do I really have a favorite family? Mm-hmm. I'm not sure I really have a favorite. Pop. And uh, Akara. Unfortunately, during the time of breaking the fast, most people unknowingly indulge in eating heavily. Because if your iftar meal is too heavy, you won't be able to wake up to do your tajud. <laughs> so your best thing is you take fruits like Devin when you are breaking the fast and any other fruit that is commonly available. But don't take the heavy meal in excess. Just a little portion of it. Personally, if my mouth is closed and no food can enter again, pap will surely enter. So even when everything is able to enter, pap will surely enter. Especially when there is milk beside it. Oh my God, and the milk is cold. You don't understand. Beyond what you would have used to actually break your fast. That's using seed, I mean using a fruit to break your fast. Beyond that, if I'm going for the major meal, I prefer a mummy and, and a pap. Let's see. Maybe serve tapioca. Nice. Nice, nice dish. Favorite iftar meal will largely be something that has a bit of sugar in it. I mean, you've, you've been fasting all day, you've lost a lot of calories, you need to get back in shape. So, we're, talk, we're talking dates here because the Prophet advised it. We're talking milk, we're talking um, just sugar stuff generally, tea, you know, something that you can just. Just, just unwind with for the time being before you go for salat. Don't really have anything favorite for Ramadan. I take anything that comes. But well, like I said earlier, beans. I love beans, so I can not take beans too. There's nothing much because we are usually in the hostel. Maybe just fried rice and chicken. Nothing much. I like to go light, liquid mostly. I'm from Isain, uh, and we like ogi. That's a uh, pop. We like it very much. Even during the uh, ordinary day, you know, we used to take it. But because uh, I have medical issue, ulcer issue, uh, whenever I, I fast, I always like to take liquid, a lot of liquid, uh, fruit, and all that. Uh, but once in a while, after the uh, uh, Sarawi is something just before I sleep. I always like Amala and Abula. Maybe three times or four times during the Ramadan, you know. Uh, but during the Sari, uh, I don't like eating too much. I believe that the more I eat, the more I will go to the toilet. And when I go to the toilet, the more the hunger will wire me. So I will just Small food, you know, the, yeah, no, nothing, everything will just go smoothly. And all. My favorite iftar meal, rice. <laughs> rice, I know that's unimaginative, but it's rice. Uh, Alhamdulillah, like one of the first things you will want to date, and then from there you have uh, fruit, and uh, you know. Well, sometimes, you know, one likes a lot of, uh, you know, liquid drink. Favorite. I like the fruits. I like fruits very much. So, and because it's filling when I eat it, and because I'm trying to not to eat too much, so it fills me up, and by the time I'm taking my next meal, like the Uke and the Akara, I'm not taking so much, so... I like the fruit, and plus is when 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 it's garnished is um, beautiful. I just I just like my iftar to be maybe fruits, but when I'm at home, I like to take um, ogi. I like to take ogi during iftar, so I like that. But when I'm in school, it's just fruits.
بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم قرآن ويكلي uh, This is your brother Norman Ali Khan uh, Hopefully with a, a reminder for myself and all of you on the upcoming Ramadan inshallah ta'ala And I wanted to share with you some insights from the Quran that I per- particularly find very very powerful uh, All of you know, probably most of you know that in the Quran uh, the entire discussion on Ramadan and on fasting is actually encapsulated in one small section in Surah Al-Baqarah. This one passage deals with the subject comprehensively and you know the legal aspects of it and the spiritual aspects of it and all of it's done in this one concise passage and it's not mentioned anywhere else in the Quran which is very powerful. So we, when we look for guidance and advice about the month of Ramadan, obviously the logical first place to start is the Book of Allah and to turn to this passage. And in this passage, there are a few ayat that deal with, you know, some, sometimes the technicalities, you know, what days are you supposed to fast, until when, when does the fast begin, when does it end, uh, if you're sick, etc., the legalities of it. But on the other side, Allah also mentions this phrase that comes up, la'allah. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the word la'allah first, and then, inshallah, I'll share with you, the, you know, some really beautiful things that I find uh, fascinating. The word la'allah in Arabic actually means several things. It means, so that... So Allah will say something and at the end of his statement he'll say لَعَلَّكُمْ So that all of you such and such and such So whatever Allah said, the purpose of it is after la'alla. Whatever guidance Allah gave us, like Allah gave us the month of Ramadan And at the end of giving us the month he says لَعَلَّكُمْ So that all of you And then he'll complete his statement So it's like the purpose of Ramadan is being told La'alla also means hopefully Hopefully In other words, I've given you this, hopefully you'll do that Whatever, Allah, whatever guidance Allah has given us, in this case the month of Ramadan, the institution, the law of fasting, I've given this to you, hopefully you'll benefit from it in this way. In other words, I, did, I give, gave this to you for this purpose, and secondly, hopefully you'll attain that purpose. You know what that teaches us? It teaches us that just because you, you and I fast, that doesn't mean that we're going to attain the results we're looking to attain. There's a hope that we will, but it's not a guarantee. So the word la'allah does that that hopefully it will be attained. And la'allah also means perhaps. So there's a possibility that you will attain it, but it's not a guarantee. But since the meaning includes hope in it, raja in it, what that does for us is it makes us optimistic. On the one hand, there are no guarantees that in Ramadan, whatever Allah wants us to achieve, we will achieve. But at the same time, there's hope in all of us that has been placed. So with that brief introduction, let me share a couple of things with you. First thing Allah Azza says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Those of you who have iman fasting has been made law on you, has been prescribed upon you, just like it was on people who came before you, so that you may attain taqwa, you may become conscious. So, you that, so that you may become conscious. You may become cautious and aware. Taqwa in Arabic is an urge to protect yourself, to watch out for trouble. It comes from the word wiqaya, which literally means protection. You know, like we say, وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارْقِي That part of that dua, that supplication, actually means protect us from the punishment of the fire. So Allah says, you were given fasting, just like they, it was given to people before you, hopefully, you people will develop the urge to protect yourself. That's how I'm going to translate it first. Also, I gave this to you so that you developed a sense of protecting yourself. Then, chances are you will develop. There's a possibility you'll develop the sense, the, the urge to protect yourself. The first obvious question is, protect yourself from what? Protect yourself from landing yourself in further trouble. Protect yourself from putting yourself in loss. From disappointing Allah. From disappointing the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa From disappointing yourself. You know, you'll protect yourself from all these negative things and that's why fasting is given to you. So in this first video, I briefly want to talk to you about this idea of what's the relationship between fasting and taqwa from perhaps a psychological point of view and that, then we'll conclude. Maybe in another video inshallah ta'ala, I'll share with you some other insights about fasting in Ramadan. So, Allah, when, when He gave us fasting, subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a physical thing, you feel it. Like, even if you're not a very spiritual person and you're fasting, you're going to feel the thirst, you're going to feel the hunger. It's a physical thing that you feel, right? And your, your stomach is screaming at you, it's telling you, feed me. Your throat is yelling at you, it's telling you, feed me, give me food, give me, thir- give me water, right? So there's this battle going on inside you, a physical battle taking place inside you. And then, the only other entity inside you is your heart. And it's like your heart is in charge and it yells at your stomach and it yells at your throat and says, you watch it, not until Maghrib. We're not going to disobey Allah until Maghrib. We're going to protect ourselves from eating that food and drinking that drink until that time. 
So there's this war raging inside your body and your heart is in control. Your heart fears Allah and your heart says, no, we're not going to eat this, we're not going to drink that. I know fasting has to do with more, just, more than just eating and drinking, but I'm focusing on the physical aspects that at least everybody feels. Everybody feels thirst, everybody feels hunger when they fast. Okay? Now, you know when, think outside of fasting, you're, you know, you're walking down the street and you have an urge, you know, some, some, one of you younger guys walking down the street, you see a woman pass by and your eye just goes towards her. And you fail to lower your eyes. You know, there was an urge, just like your throat had an urge and your stomach had an urge, your eyes had an urge, they, they wanted to look. And but when, you're, when your stomach and your, your throat, they had an urge, your heart was telling them, stop. No, 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 you will, not, you will not quench your thirst. You will wait until the right time. But when your eyes look towards the wrong thing, is your heart in charge and is your heart telling you immediately, hey, don't even raise your eyes. Look the other way. Say astaghfirullah. Not until Allah gives you the halal option. Not until you get married. Not until Jannah. Not until later. When, what Allah has is better for you, even if you have to wait for it, even though your urge, your, your thirst, your appetite is very strong, even though that, that's the case, you have to stop yourself, you have to protect yourself. That doesn't happen for most of us. We don't stop. We just, we look, we feel bad later, then we go to Jummah and say, man, I'm really messed up, and you know, the cycle perpetuates. Ramadan is an opportunity, 30 days in a row, your heart is in charge, and your body is submitting. You know, the, the consciousness of Allah is alive, and your body's submitting. You know how, like, Jummah is a good spiritual high, but then you have six days to get weak again. But what, what does Allah do in Ramadan? 30 days, you are winning this battle. And by the way, one of the f primary drivers that makes you lose this battle is shaitan and his marketing to you, right? He just keeps telling you, come on, come on, just a little sip. Just a little bit, just taste a little bit. Just look a little bit, just do a little bit. It's not that bad. At least you're not like that guy over there, you know? But all of that will disappear for you in Ramadan. If you go through a 30-day rigorous process like that, it's like your heart, that the command of the heart has been made strong, and the urges inside you have been made weak. They've been made weak. Now you're prepared truly to protect yourself when you're out there in the real world. So the last example I'll give you before, inshallah ta'ala, I, I share the rest with you in another session. You know police officers, and like firemen, and military, these people when they train, they don't go actually into a burning building and train. They first go to like these training facilities and they do mock exercises and they get ready for the real thing and they go to shooting ranges and, ranges and they shoot. They practice before they hit the real thing, right? Before the real enemy strikes. It's kind of like that with Ramadan. 30 days Allah put shaitan away, right? And He allowed us to train ourselves to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And now that your training is done, you're not, not always going to be inside the training campus. The police officer is going to have to deal with the real dangers outside. The fireman is going to have to fight the real fire. Just like that, we're going to have to fight the real enemy, the shaitan, and his command over our nafs. We're going to have to engage in that real battle once that training is over. That's when we're going to need to learn to guard ourselves, protect ourselves, make our hearts these strong forts that shaitan cannot enter into. So that's, you know, it's the spirit of لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ You've been given this institution of fasting so that you may be able to protect yourselves. May Allah Azza wa make all of us people that are able to protect themselves in and beyond Ramadan. And may Allah Azza wa make the training of Ramadan something that lasts in us and we, we are able to take the spirit of it and drive that in the rest of our lives. Barakallahu li wa lakum and assalamu alaikum Quran Weekly. TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Hafiz Oyeturu, popularly known as Saka. You are on to Al TV. Keep watching Al TV. Allah bless you as you do so. Masalam.
join us again tomorrow for more. At every point in time, we should see ourselves as a need of help from God as well. So whatever we have, we should uh, seek that help from God through charity to other human beings, to His creatures. The Prophet said, Every act of kindness you do to a living being, you have reward from Allah. Any act of kindness you do to a living being, you have a reward from Allah. Whether the person you are kind to and charitable to is a Muslim or not a Muslim. HAL TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel.